all, it's Joanne. In this video, I'm going to go over and highlight some important information about hamsters, gerbils, and ferrets from Danny's exotics class. First, let me touch on some pointers that have been helping me stay focused so I don't get overwhelmed by all the information. The biggest help so far has been our Q&A book. I answer all the questions on the Prendergast site, and they give me the correct answer and the rationale at the bottom. When there are questions that I'm not confident about, I just note the answers and the rationale on a separate piece of paper so I can review later. I also have all my notes, PowerPoints, and textbooks from previous classes to help if I still don't understand the topic. On to hamsters. When I think of hamsters, I think of the letter H, and H stands for hoard, since they hoard stuff in their cheek pouches, like a female will hide the young in them when feeling threatened. Of course, we all remember cheek pouches are considered an immunological privileged site because of the absence of an intact lymphatic drainage pathway. Most common disease with hamsters is proliferative ileitis, aka whittail. This disease is the result of poor husbandry and overcrowding, and the hamsters will usually die within 48 hours. They can also get amyloidosis, which is common in aged hamsters. Not to be confused with lordosis, seen in felines ready to breed. Next is gerbils. They have long hind limbs and can stand upright and jump extremely high. Gerbils are most commonly used for endocrine studies because of their very low water intake and concentrated urine. They are also utilized for biological studies since they are resistant to radiation. Nasal dermatitis, aka red nose, is common as well as audiogenic seizures in this species. You never want to give ace promazine to a gerbil since it will lower the seizure threshold. Unlike most rodents, they have long furry tails, but don't grab them by the tail since they are susceptible to tail slip. We will wrap up this video with ferrets. I'm going to try to make this a little bit more interesting by telling a story. Hob and Jill go out on date, and oops, 41 to 42 days later, here come the kits and all together they form a business. Jill gets tired of taking care of all the business and cuts those hobs down to size. Now called gibbs, they can't sow any more wild oats. Disease-wise, ferrets can get proliferative bowel disease caused by desophovibrio, and I associate the D and the F from that monster word to disease of ferrets to help me remember. They are not susceptible to feline distemper but can get canine distemper. So that is a study that they are commonly used for in addition to influenza studies. Some miscellaneous diseases to remember that affect ferrets are neoplastic diseases, which include lymphosarcomas and splenic hyperplasia, among others. Hyperadrenocorticism, which can cause vulvar swelling in spade ferrets. And finally, insulinomas, that is a common problem in ferrets where they become weak and can temporarily drag their rear legs. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching and happy studying.